Jen Wills, and I am absolutely thrilled to be defending for the Giller Light Bash, Suvankam Temavanks' How to Pronounce Knife. How to Pronounce Knife is a heart-stopping result of a poet storyteller giving just enough, but never too much. It is a meticulous book where the reader registers how deliberate every choice has been, but the stories, the language, are never weighted by those things. In fact, the brilliance hovers, floats even, just above that expertise, which is the magic of a true craftsperson. The skill is there, but it never draws away, it never distracts. It's just whispered into the text, making it breathe, making it live. This is a collection of short stories of human experience laid bare. Outcomes are bittersweet, like the threads of love lost and gained in and around the chicken processing plant in the story entitled Paris, or the hopes blighted and maintained when an amateur boxer takes on employment at his sister's salon in Manny Petty, or even the resignation of the devoted protagonist of the school bus driver, Jai, who desperately reminds himself that his name in Lao means heart. Characters are both fragile and bold, unapologetic but loving, relatable and imperfect, but also in some cases versions of ourselves we can only dream might one day be. There is, 70 year old, there is a 70 year old narrator of Slingshot who takes a lover half her age in a story that unfolds love and lust, with the sweetest bit of irony. The 14 year old girl in Picking Worms who learns at so young an age the unfairness of ethnic nepotism and everyday erasure that accompanies it. These are stories about race, gender, sexuality, class, migration, loss and gain. They are about who is seen in society and who is not and by whom. They're at times unforgiving to the mean circumstances that have led their characters to the places they now occupy. But disappointment and struggle are rarely given sentimentally, are commonplace and unromantic. And thus these stories also resist the fetishistic orientalist lens that can only imagine refugee people, immigrant people, Asian people, and people of color more broadly in a frame of suffering. What's more, these are stories that also shimmer with the complexity of knowing love, joy, empowerment, and dignity in all sorts of contexts. These are stories that teach that instruct via subtext, innuendo, implication. There is no ethnography here. Temavanksa refuses the role of native informant, refuses that kind of pedagogical burden. And so these stories deliver education in a way that insists upon its subjects, humanity, individuality, and nuance that don't give their, their subjects away for free. These are stories that force the readers to come at least halfway. These are stories that play, stories that unsettle by sinking into the body and making me blush, making me desire, that make me angry and indignant, but also laugh and respond. I find myself humming at the back of my throat in appreciation of how far they fly into me. These are stories that shimmer the prose is sparse and clean. The writing is like a sleight of hand with the reader knowing that they have just witnessed something remarkable, but in a way that leaves them pondering for days, weeks even, what exactly it was. I'll finish by saying there's softness here. There's also hardness here. How to Pronounce Knife is a book to hold on to forever and ever, to return to again and again and again.